Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, give all praise to the Most High Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. I pray the Most High blesses this lesson this evening, gives us more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past. In order to understand events that are currently happening on the earth. So we get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. Brethren, to get into some information from the ISIS Unveiled books. Uh, we're going to start getting into some more of this information. Just confirmation of the things that the Most High is already putting in our spirits. You know, every day we're seeing how the Most High is um, exposing the Gentiles and the other nations, as well as our own brethren who have um, taken the bag and have, uh, you know, made agreements with the other nations. You know, it's like you can just see how the other nations are just, they're stuck. They're stuck following the same dogma, same playbook as always. And you're trying to see how... You know, they play off of each other. You see how the churches play off of each other. Oh, you know, I'm not like those Catholics. I'm not like those Protestants. I'm not like those, you know, those Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm not like those Mormons. And that has been a, a real huge part of the playbook this whole time. But one thing, like I said, that they're always consistent on is only accepting the books that the mother church has approved. And if they deviate, they might deviate just a little bit, but it's just enough so that you can say things like, I'm not part of that group. You know, that group's going off because of this and that group's going off because of that. As long as there is a little bit of contention involved, it's okay. Because that, all, that, that greases the, re the wheels. You know, that greases the gears. Uh, you know, of making people be complacent and not search for things on their own. If you think that your group is better than some other group, then you have no need to research. You have no need to chase after the Most High because you think whatever that little group, that little difference that your group has is all that you need to, you know, you need to know in order to make it to the kingdom. And they took those contentious feelings and thoughts and they brought that into the truth as well. Well, I'm not like GMS. I'm not like IUIC. You know, I'm not like, you know, in these other groups. Because like I said, that, that's all part of the whole contention. Just showing a little bit of difference. I say, Ahia, you say, yeah, how about, oh, you know, you're saying the name wrong. You know, so you're, 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 you're going off. You know, I'm not like GOCC. I'm not like this group. I'm not like that group. So same things. But you're still not looking for the Most High in the different areas. You're still following, you know, the books that pretty much the church, the Catholic church, the priest of Mahan has approved. So you just see how deep, you know, the deception goes. And I just thank the Most High that he's allowed us to chase after him wherever he leads us. We're going to be getting into the Isis Unveiled, first edition, first printed in 1877 by Blavatsky. There's less than 20 in existence. And the thing is, is that, you know, when they can't explain away all the information, that's when they, you know, do the character assassinations. Oh, she's a devil worshiper. She's this, she's that, you know, and they, they don't talk about the information that's in the books. They don't talk about the notes. They don't talk about the references. You know, they've tried their best, the Catholic church and the Christian church to burn all these books. Now, see, if supposedly Protestants or Christians and Catholics were enemies, then why would both groups be hell bent on burning these books? See, that's just a facade for the um, for the masses. 
Just like Democrats and Republicans. Oh, you know, I'm a I'm a Democrat, so therefore I, I'm for the people. And the Republicans, oh, I'm a I'm a blue I'm a red blooded American, you know, America. I say, you know, we're, we're we we love Jesus. We're Christians, you know, and so we're all going to heaven. Same thing, nothing new. We look right here, though. What does it say? Uh, most were destroyed by the Catholic and other Christian churches. Okay, this set right here is in good condition for the age. It says the second edition is more rare than even the first. Um, we're going to be getting into some information. I mean, you know, reading and getting some information. I'm going to start bringing more information because you know what? We got to keep growing. We got to keep going. You know, we can definitely talk about what's going on, what we're seeing. There's many, many events that are going on. I said, but we got, we got things to do. We got... You know, as we get this information, it opens up other other things in the spirit world. As we get more understanding, it opens up more understanding even in the spirit world. Things that it gets confirmation to things that the Holy Spirit's already been showing us before we even get in the books, before we even get this information. We've always known that there's been something wrong. We've always heard about them hiding books, hiding information. We're actually going to get into information, how they talk about, you know, we're always wondering, like, what's under the Vatican? What are they hiding in those 50, uh, 50 miles underneath the Vatican? This is going to get into some of that today as well. You know, I said, these books, this information is for us. It's confirmation for us. Many people know about the, you know, the 50 miles, you know, that the, that this underneath the Vatican of books and information. But then they won't go any deeper. They won't go any further like, hey, what, why, why do they have that? What are they hiding? Who gave them the authority to get all this information and to hide it? Why do they get to hide this from the, from the whole world? See, you know, I got these people that I'll talk to that always talk about the Catholic Church. They're, they're gung-ho Christians. But they talk about the Christian Church or the Catholic Church, but they follow Catholic doctrine to the T. I'm going to read a little bit right here. Check this part out right here. Uh, page 200 from this book right here. Talking about the Catholic Bible, okay, from which the text is quoted with charming candor, says in a footnote, it is extremely difficult to explain, meaning that Saul was a child of one year. But undaunted by any difficulty, the, ed the editor not, nevertheless does take upon himself to explain it and adds a child of one year. That is, he was good and like an innocent child. An interpretation as ingenious as it is, pi as, as is pious, and which, if it does no good, can certainly do no harm. Now, you take a look at the little star and look down, and it just kind of goes into how the, the Catholics and the Protestants go at each other. He says, uh, it, is the, uh, it is the correct interpretation of the Bible allegories that makes the Catholic clergy so wrathful with the Protestants who freely scrutinize the Bible. How bitter this feeling has become, because we can judge by the following words of the Reverend Father Parker of High Park, New York, who, lecturing in St. Teresa's Catholic Church, okay, on the 10th of December, 1876, said, To whom does the Protestant Church owe its possession of the Bible? See, there they are, and then you know, the Catholic, you know, you Protestants, where did you get your Bible from? Who's your daddy? Who gave you that Bible? You didn't get it yourself. You got it from us. But see, Protestants, you know, they, they want to skip over that fact. They want to talk all this crap about the Catholic Church. The Catholics know, hey, you got that Bible from us. You're following our doctrine. You're our baby. You're our hearted house. You, know, you want to act like you're independent, but they know better. So again, to whom does the Protestant church owe its possession of the Bible, which they wish to place in the hands of every ignorant person and child? The monkish hands that laboriously transcribed it before okay, the age of printing. Protestantism has produced dissension in church, rebellions and outbreaks in state, unsoundness in social life, and will never be satisfied 
short of the downfall of the Bible. Protestants must admit that the Roman church has done more to scatter Christianity and extirpate idolatry than all their sects. Okay, from one pulpit, it is said that there is no hell, and from another, that there is immediate and unmitigated damnation. One says that Jesus Christ was only a man, another that you uh, must be plunged bodily into water to be baptized, and refuses the rites to infants. Most of them have no prescribed form of worship, no sacred vestments, and their doctrines are as undefined as their service is informal. The founder of Protestantism, Martin Luther, was the worst man in Europe. The advent of the Reformation was the signal for civil war. And from that time to this, the world has been in a restless state, uneasy in regard to governments, and every day becoming more skeptical. Okay? The ultimate tendency of Protestantism is clearly nothing less than a destruction of all respect for the Bible and the disruption of government and society. Very plain talk, this. The Protestants might easily return the compliment. I see you always hear a lot about how Protestants attack Catholics, but you don't really hear the reciprocation. But see, right here, you see what the Protestants think. I'm sorry, what the Catholics think of the Protestants. You know, that they're just pretty much, they take the Bible, do whatever they want with it, and they have like no structure whatsoever. That's why they'll come up with, uh, oh, we're a Protestant, oh, we're evangelicals, oh, we're non-denominational. I said, but they're still all arguing about the same book, just different interpretations. And both of them are wrong because the, the these scriptures have nothing to do with either group. But as long as they get people to continue to argue about the interpretation from each of these groups that have nothing to do with the Bible, they've done their they've done their job. They've kept you from chasing after the Most High. They've kept you from chasing spiritual things. They've kept you thinking about only carnal things, carnal understanding. And that's been the goal all along. There's no answers to a lot of these questions that they're that they're bringing up. They just want you to argue about it. Many of the answers are going to be locked away in those vaults under the Vatican. And there are 50 miles, 50 plus miles of vaults. You're going to you'd be able to get more, you know, clarification. But they're not going to give you that. They just give you enough to keep you arguing over carnal things that really don't matter. Because you said you're going to be just continuing to fight, hoping that eventually you know, you'll get answers or whatever. So, hey, the Most High is going to have to give us those answers through the spirit world. And eventually we'll get confirmation because we'll get our records back. Just like our records were taken from us and given to the Gentiles, they'll be taken from the Gentiles and given back to the Most High's people. Let's continue. But I wanted you guys to have an opportunity to see this information on your own so you can read it on your own. And the same thing coming on right now talking about these books and this information and how it's been hidden, how, you know, there was all this information during the antediluvian era, era. And these guys have gotten their hands on it and hidden so much of it. And that's why when you hear people say, well, I haven't read those books. Well, I'm not going to be, it's not going to be, you know, held against us. I haven't read, you know, the Old Testament pseudepigrapha, but I don't think God is going to use that against us. How do you know? You see, you know, it's easy for Christians to say things like that. That gives them an out. Oh, well, you know, God, I didn't know. I, I didn't know that those were your people. I didn't know about these prophecies being fulfilled. See, just because you don't know doesn't mean that these prophecies aren't being fulfilled. There are all these prophecies that are being fulfilled that the vast majority of the world is unaware of. Does that mean that, you know, they don't matter? Of course not, because the Most High's words are not going to come back void. Just like he said, we're going to wake up in the lands of our captivities. That's exactly what's happened. Just like, you know, the, the Valley of Dry Bones, the ar great army awakening and standing up again. <clears throat> that's happening. Us being given more books and more understanding. That's happening. 
So just because a lot of you Gentiles will say things like, oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, I'm only going to be responsible for the books that the Catholic Church has approved for me. Catholic Church is doing their, their damnedest to keep you quiet and keep you asleep. And that's exactly what they're doing. So check this part out right here. There are strange traditions current in various parts of the East on Mount Athos and in the desert of Nitria. For instance, among certain monks and with learned rabbis in Palestine who pass their lives in commenting upon the Talmud, they say that not all the rules and manuscripts reported in history to have been burned by Caesar, by the Christian mob in 389, and by the Arab general Amru perished as it is commonly believed. Okay? And the story they tell is the following. See, they try to tell you, oh, there is nothing else to read. There are no other books. There is no other information. Just what we've given you. But they've kept a lot of this important information hidden and to themselves. And this is why they tell you, oh, the Blavatsky, oh, Satan worshiper, don't look at this information. Because they don't want you to realize that these people have been hiding all this information, keeping the world in darkness, keeping the world blind. They can't explain it away, so therefore that's why they were trying to burn all these books. But the Most High preserved the ones that we needed to get our hands on. For here, for a time such as this. So uh, they tell this the following. At the time of the contest for the throne in 51 BC, between Cleopatra and her brother Dionysius, Ptolemy, the Brookion, which contained over 700,000 rolls, all bound in wood and fireproof parchment, was undergoing, uh, undergoing repairs. Okay? More fast. And a great portion of the original manuscripts, considered among the most precious and which were not duplicated, were stored away in the house of one of the librarians as the fire which consumed the rest was but the result of accident, no precautions had been taken at the time. But they add that several hours passed between the burning of the fleet set on fire by Caesar's order <clears throat> and the moment when the first buildings situated near the harbor caught fire in their turn. And that all the librarians aided by several hundred slaves attached to the museum succeeded in saving the most precious of the rolls. So perfect and solid was the fabric of the parchment that while in some rolls, the inner pages and the wood binding were reduced to ashes and of others, the parchment binding remained unscorched. These particulars were all written out in Greek, Latin, and uh, the caudio syriatic dialect by a learned youth named Theodos, one of the scribes employed in the museum. One of these manuscripts is alleged to be preserved till now in a Greek convent. See, they got, our, they got our information and just hid it everywhere. And the person who narrated the tradition to us had, been, had seen it himself. He said that many more will see it and learn where to look for important documents when a certain prophecy will be fulfilled. Adding that most of these works could be found in Tartary and India. Okay? So they're talking about these certain prophecies. Now, see, these are prophecies that they're definitely going to be hiding. They don't want people to realize that there's other prophecies about how we're going to get these books back. We're going to get this information back. We're right. We were destroyed for a lack of knowledge, but the Most High is going to restore our knowledge. That's all part of prophecy. Just like I talked about in 2nd Edges 14, how there are certain books given to the world, and there are going to be certain books that are going to be preserved for the wise. Could that be the prophecy it's referring to? Quite possibly. Quite possibly. Okay? So the monk showed us a copy of the original, which of course we could read, but poorly, as we claim but little erudition in the matter of dead languages. But we were so uh, particularly struck by, and now you can read the bottom section right there, okay? And just, you know, you can get this deep understanding. You can get this sacred knowledge and sacred information, just like it's, it's referring to, secret prophecies being fulfilled. And we, we read those, we read about these secret prophecies and the books that have been hidden. Is that maybe why Second Edges, you know, has been hidden? Because they don't want people to realize that there are prophecies of these important documents coming back again. Let's read that part again. He said that many more will see it and learn where to look for important documents 
when a certain prophecy will be fulfilled. So like I said, all these prophecies, you, you know, the vast majority of the Gentiles, they're not talking about these secret prophecies. They're talking about new prophecies that are, people are making up about things going on in Europe. But they're not talking about these secret prophecies about where to find this information, where to find these books, how we get our knowledge restored at the end. It says the vivid and picturesque translation of the Holy Father that we perfectly remember some curious paragraphs which run as far as we can recall them as follows. When the queen of the sun, Cleopatra, was brought back to the half-ruined city after the fire had devoured the uh, glory of the world, and when, the, when she saw the mountains of books or rolls covering the half-consumed steps of the Estrada, and when she perceived that the inside was gone and the indestructible covers alone remained, she wept in rage and fury and cursed the meanness okay, of her fathers who had grudged the cost of the real per Pergamos for the inside as well as the outside of, of the precious rolls. Further, our author Theodos indulges in a joke at the expense of the queen for believing that nearly all the library was burned, when in fact hundreds and thousands of the choicest books were safely stored in his own house and those of other scribes, librarians, students, and philosophers. See, they knew where the real treasures were. They knew what the real treasures were. And it was this information that many people thought, you know, was lost. But many in the know knew that they still had access to this information. It says, no more do sundry, very learned cops scattered all over the East in Asia Minor, Egypt and Palestine believe in the total destruction of the subsequent libraries. For instance, they say that out of the library of Attalus III or Pergamus presented by Antony to Cleopatra, not a volume was destroyed. At that time, according to their assertions, from the moment that the Christians began to gain power in Alexandria, about the end of the fourth century, and Anatolius, Bishop of Laodicea, began to insult the na national gods. Okay, the pagan philosophers and learned theurgists adopted effective measures to preserve the repositories of their sacred learning. Theophilus, a bishop who left behind him the reputation of a most rascally and mercenary uh, villain, was accused by one named Antonian, Antoninus, a famous theurgist and eminent scholar of occult science of Alexandria. Okay, with bribing the slaves of the Serapion to steal books, which he sold to foreigners at great prices. Things we see is going on today. These people have our books and they sell these books at ridiculously high prices. Nothing new under the sun. Same thing going on back then. Same thing going on right now. These people know how important these books are. Now you got an, maybe an idea of what's been hidden under the Vatican. Now you maybe understand why you got 50 plus miles of books and other, you know, roles, you know, and all this other information under the Vatican. They're telling you right now, a lot of these books were never, they were never burned, but they had to have a place for them to be on safekeeping. That why like, you know, the Vatican is its own country. So they answer to no one so they can keep our records from us. But like I said, there's a prophecy about us getting our records restored back to us. All they're doing is keeping it safe for the real owners to raise, to, to be risen back up. And that's exactly what's going on right now. Okay. Let's continue here. History tells us how, uh, let's see. Theophilus had the best of the philosophers in AD 389, and how his successor and a nephew, the now less infamous serial butchered Hypatia, Suidas uh, gives us some details about Antoninus, whom he calls Antononius, and his eloquent friend Olympus, the defender of the Serapim. But history is far from being complete in the miserable remnants of the books, which, crossing so many ages, have reached our own learned century. 
it fails to give the facts relating to the first five centuries of Christianity, which are preserved in the numerous traditions current in the East. Unauthenticated as these may appear, there is unquestionably in the heap of chaff much good grain. That these traditions are not often uh, communicated to Europeans is not strange. When we consider how apt our travelers uh, are to render themselves antagonistic to the natives by their skeptical bearing and occasionally dogmatic intolerance. When exceptional men like some archeologists who knew how to win the confidence of even friendship of certain Arabs are favored with precious documents. It is declared simply a coincidence. And yet there are widespread traditions of the existence of certain subterranean and immense galleries in the neighborhood of Ishmonia, the petrified city, in which are stored numberless manuscripts, okay, and rolls. For no amount of money would the Arabs go near it. At night, they say, from the crevices of the desolate ruins, sunk deep in the unwatered sands of the desert, stream the rays from lights carried to and fro in the galleries by no human hands. The uh, Aphrodites or Aphrodites study the literature of the antediluvian ages according to their belief. So, you know, you got these literature from, you know, you have plenty of information from the antediluvian ages that we are not able to get our hands on that they don't even talk about. They, they are like, hey, you start with Moses. Don't be asking me any more questions. Don't be asking about any other information. Don't be asking about information before the flood. This is what you get. So just argue back and forth between yourselves and don't think bigger. Don't think further back. Just, just accept what we gave you and that's all you need to worry about. You see, that's what most eyes like. And you know, there's way more, way more to us than what they're telling us. So we got the, um, and the djinn learns from the magic rolls the lesson of the following day. The Encyclopedia Britannica, in its article on Alexandria, says, when the temple of Serapis was demolished, the valuable library was pillaged or destroyed. And 20 years afterwards, the empty shelves excited the regret, etc. But it does not state the subsequent fate of the pillaged books. See, they're not telling you about these books that were, that were stolen. They don't want you to even think about that. They don't want you to realize that there's all this information that is being withheld from the world. They're like, oh, it got burned. Oh, it's just lost. But wait, you got 50 miles of, of treasures, of information underneath the Vatican. Oh, don't worry about that. Why can't we see it? Can we go in? Can we see it? No, you can't. Why not? Because we said so. Oh, okay, so we're just going to take your word for it. Yep, that's exactly what you're going to do. Take our word for it. Because we don't. We wouldn't lie. We're not lying to you every single day about absolutely everything, are we? No. So you just you just trust us that we're telling you the truth. And that's why the Most High is going to be destroying these people. He's going to be revealing more and more. And you just think about all this information that they've that they're hiding and they're keeping away from the people. Just, just, just imagine, just think about that. So again, but it does not state the subsequent fate of the pillage books. In rivalry of the fierce Mary worshipers of the fourth century, the modern clerical pros, uh, persecutors of liberalism and heresy would willingly shut up all the heretics and their books in some modern uh, Serapion, okay, and burn them alive. The cause of this hatred is natural. Modern research has more than um, more than ever unveiled the secret. It is not the worship of saints and angels now, said Bishop Newton years ago. In all respects, the same that the worship of demons was in former times. The name only is different. The thing is identically the same. The very same temples, the very same images, which were once consecrated to Jupiter and the other demons, are now consecrated to the Virgin Mary and other saints. The whole of paganism is converted and applied to popery. <coughs> These people are not worshiping the Most High. We know they're worshiping the demons and the powers and the principalities 
of this world. And they just masqueraded as uh, following God. I mean, that's very evident. Just, just this, earth, this earth world was given to the hands of the wicked. All of our records, they've stolen. They just set up roadblocks for us to be, not, not be able to get it. Because that lack of knowledge is what destroyed us. Take our records. Don't allow us access to them. But the Most High is about to take care of that. Okay? So why not be impartial and add that a good portion of it was adopted by Protestant religions also? See, that's the thing. These Protestants and these Christians want to act like, oh, we didn't, we didn't do the same thing. We didn't adopt those practices. Yes, you did. You follow Satan just like the church, just like the Catholic Church, just like the priesthood of Mahat. And again, why not be impartial and add that a good portion of it was adopted by Protestant religions also. The very apostolic designation, Peter, is from the mysteries. The Hierophant, or Supreme Pontiff, bore the Chaldean title, Peter, or Interpreter. The names Pata, Peter, the residents of Balaam, Patara, and Patras. The names of oracle cities, Patiris, Pateras, and perhaps... Well, we're going to stop on that for now, for today. We'll get into some more of that later on. That's just a, just kind of getting some information. I wanted to share a little bit with you on this information. This is just showing you how they've taken our records, hidden this information, did not get rid of it. Just they're holding it for us. They don't think so, but the Most High has made them hold it for us. Set up a whole narrative of how all of our records are gone. And yet you just get the Bible that starts with Moses and all this other information doesn't matter. And then they just keep you arguing and fighting with each other over information that you can't really ever approve or get the answers to. They don't want you to actually get the answers. They just want you to fight and argue. They don't want you to, you know, get to the nitty gritty. They don't want you to get down you know, to the correct answers. They just want to give you enough information to keep you fighting and arguing with each other. Just like you saw with Israel, when you saw the break, you know, with Israel and people just want to make accusations, unprovable, unprovable accusations. All they, so, so you just go back and forth, but nothing ever gets, you know, resolved. Because that's what Satan wants. Satan isn't about resolving issues, resolving matters. He's about arguing and being contentious and not and then just concentrating on the carnal and not learning and not growing and not growing spiritually. As you can see, the other the other nations, even the people like our people who have, you know, made leagues and, and, and you know, had worked with them, who work with them, who made agreements with them who made covenants with them, they do exactly the same thing. They don't ever answer the questions. They answer questions with more questions. They just make, uh, they just sit there and just, you know, lie and make up things in order to just continue the back and forth because they're not about following the Most High. They're not about rising. They're not, they're, 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 all they are is about keeping everyone else from rising. They're not able to rise, so therefore they want you just to fight and argue so that you don't rise as well. Because Joe, you don't realize the um, the uh, power that you have and the ability you have to rise and to grow and to grow up towards the Most High. All praise is the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Shalom.